Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle, a brand new puzzle indeed, that has already garnered five uh, email recommendations to us. It's by the absolute phenom, uh, Kane Puzzles, uh, which is the pseudonym of a young Turkish constructor by the name of Chan Erturan. And Chan is, I think, is still 14 years old. Uh, he's either 14 or just ticked over to 15. Uh, and absolutely astonishing young mind and today we're going to be just doing a normal killer sudoku um, and the puzzle is called something doesn't add up which is an intriguing title um, i don't know why it's called that i can see there's one cage that doesn't have a that doesn't have a cage total but i think that's the only unusual feature of the puzzle um, but as I say, um, five people have been moved so much by solving this already, and I think I think it's only been out for a couple of days um, that they've 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 written to us saying we really must try and do this on the channel. So that's exactly what I'm going to try and do for you today. Um, now I've got some, I've got some lovely things to tell you about today. I'm going to start. Um, we got tweeted um, this, which I hope is self-explanatory. Um, somebody called Walso. Um, on Twitter um, and you can see if you look carefully that Walso I think I think Walso is um, is the lady wearing her cracking the cryptic merch and this is somewhere called Marlin or Malin Head in Donegal in Ireland and look <laughs> it's a proposal <laughs> this is what you get if you're a puzzler wearing Cracking the Cryptic merchandise. So absolutely fantastic. Um, many, many congratulations to the two of you. Um, actually, look, it happened on the 23rd of June, so uh, we only found out about it just now. Um, but absolutely brilliant. Um, and uh, yeah, oh, hang on. I've also got a picture of the engagement ring. So... Our congratulations to you both. That really was very special. And in fact, while I am on Twitter, I can show you something else I wanted to tell you about today, which is quite, quite different. Um, this, I think you can see that. Um, so this is Dean Mayer, uh, possibly my favorite. Um, so yeah, I think probably is my favorite writer of daily cryptic crosswords. So I have, I have a great fondness uh, for some constructors of listener style crosswords, which are not not the sort of thing we're covering in our Friday masterclasses, but this was from today's Sunday Times um, solo player cross after air horns blasted, and I just thought this was such a beautiful crossword clue that I wanted to share it with you. Some of you won't be used to cryptic crosswords, and um, hopefully, hopefully you're still. Um, you will still not hold it against me if I spend just a moment or two with this clue. Um, so it, it sounds like it's about um, a musician who's cross after an air horn's blasted uh, in their vicinity. It's not at all. The, the only, the best way of understanding this clue and to just go, whoa, penny drop moment, is for me to tell you that solo player is nothing to do with a musician, but it is to do with somebody who might have played a very famous character in a uh, in an intergalactic space or soap opera space opera um, so who played Han Solo it was Harrison Ford and the way the way the wordplay works so cross after air horns blasted well if you blast the letters of air horns you anagram them and that gives you Harrison and then if you if you cross a river, one a word that you could use as a synonym for to cross a river would be to ford a river. So Harrison Ford, of course, played Han Solo. Um, I thought that was really, really lovely. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. Now, what else do I have to tell you about today? I have got some birthdays to do, um, including a very young birthday. So why don't we do those next? Peter. Peter, you've turned 27 today, and I know this because your girlfriend, Andrea, I mean, it could be Andrea as well. I'm never sure whether it's Andrea or Andrea. When I when I used to live in the north of England, all Andreas were known as Andrea. But now I've moved to the south, I've known, I, I, I know some people called Andrea. Um, so I don't know, but, 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 but Andrea and Andrea, anyway, your girlfriend um, wrote to us, and, I, and she's very sorry she can't be with you today. She's at a robotics conference in Korea. Wow. Um, now, Peter, I do have to have words with you, though, because um, Andrea, Andre 
<laughs> Andrea also told told me that you disagreed. You do like chocolate cake, but you disagreed with my um, uh, well, my views, I suppose, on the correct ratio of icing to cake. Your correct ratio is ninety nine percent cake to one percent icing. I can be fairly confident that the viewers of this video will not agree with you and will be more in my camp of fifty fifty. Um, but anyway, Peter, I hope you have a brilliant birthday today. Um, uh, on your 27th. Now turning 28 today is Paul. And I know this because your sister Izzy wrote to us. Um, and apparently, well, Izzy told me, Paul, that you prefer you prefer the Sudoku videos. Well, that's what you've got today. Uh, a puzzle by Kane, or oh, Sudoku by Kane Puzzles, no less. So I hope that this should improve your birthday somewhat. And I also hope you have cake with the correct icing ratio. And then finally, Finally, I need to say a very happy birthday to one of our youngest viewers. Levi has turned one today. Hi, Levi. I hope that you. I hope that you. I hope you know. You know what's going on here. Uh, you're over there in Buffalo, New York, and I know it's your birthday because your daddy Ryan wrote to us, and Ryan said that you've been listening to Cracking the Cryptic or on my videos since before you were born. Um, which is quite incredible, and they have the effect of calming you down. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how this can be so. But Levi, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant first birthday today. That is uh, really is. It, this is the sort of story that makes my day. Um, now, do I have anything else to tell you? Not really. We've got the crack in the cryptic Sudoku hunt going on going on over on Patreon. Um, there's a sort of thumbnail uh, emphasizing that loads and loads of you have been doing that 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 hunt actually we are getting um, every day it seems we get more and more entries the entries are accelerating um, so we're, we're on this sort of uh, this sort of path um, and and that's great it's, it's lovely to see so many of you getting into Sudoku hunts and enjoying them and I oh gosh I am going to mention another crossword related thing which is this morning um, I actually watched a video that is not live on Patreon yet, but will be very soon, either either later today or tomorrow. It is Mark solving this month's um, Times Club's month, Club monthly special, which is an absolute brute of a crossword. And although it pains me to say it, it is a deeply impressive video. Um, I mean, Mark is obviously a total phenomenon when it comes to cryptic crosswords. He's the finest cross cryptic crossword solver who ever lived. And that video, which is about 45 minutes long, demonstrates why <laughs> in the most terrifying manner. It is extraordinary. So if you if you have any interest in cryptic crossword solving at the top level, watch that and be stunned. Anyway, that's all I've got to tell you. Why don't we have a look? at uh, Chan's new puzzle. Something doesn't add up. Let's see if we can make it add up. The rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits within a cage must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage if given. Okay, so I could see this one wasn't given and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So this cage is here because it cannot have a repeated digit in it and it is eight cells large. And there are nine Sudoku digits, so there is exactly one digit missing from this cage. I, um, forgive me if that's to do with the solving, which we haven't really started yet. Okay, look at the 21 cage here. So this 21 cage needs to contain five digits that sum to 21. But what we couldn't do, for example, would be to put two fours in the cage. Although these fours don't seem to disobey the rules of Sudoku, because they're not in the same row, column, or three by three box. They disobey the rules of this puzzle because they are in the same cage, so we shouldn't do that. That will mean we get the puzzle wrong. Now do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Unusually, I get given digits. Thank you very much, Chan, for that. Um, so I can see nine lives in the 21 cage. Now that actually immediately allows to, me to pop a one into that cage as well. And that's because I know the four digits that aren't nine in this cage add up to 12. Um, and if you're making 12 with Sudoku numbers that are all different, you must have a one. And that's because two, three, four, and five add up to 14. Um, now, actually, let's just think about that because there is a three here. So if there was no, ooh, that could be a three. If there was no three in this cage, it would have to be 
one, two, four, five, nine, which would be a little bit interesting. Um, I don't see why this can't be a three, though. No, not sure. Um, all right, let's have a look for something else. We could... Ugh. And now, now I'm noticing that I've got a lot of... A lot of cages that are not restricted, or not very restricted. There are three ways of making eight, three ways of making seven in a domino. Don't know how many ways there are of making 17 or 16 in three digits, but it feels like it's a lot. Ah, all right, I can see that... Ooh, right, I can see those two cages can't be the same version of 8 cage. Imagine these were both 1, 7, for example. Then those digits by Sudoku would go into that 17 cage, where they would have to... Well, so, so two of the digits in the 17 cage would add up to 8, and the other digit would have to be a... 9 to get to 17, so we'd have two 9s in the 3x3 three three box, and that won't work. Right, okay, I'm going to colour these then, because that, that, is, that is definitely interesting. Yes, I know. Never, never speak to me at parties. The things I find interesting might not be the same things as most people. But look, so that we now know this can't be purple, so let's make it, I don't know, yellow. Now, this clearly can't be purple or yellow, because this cell can be neither of the purple two digits. In fact, ah, are we going to get... Yes, we are. I see where this is going. Okay, so this, this A can't be purple, and it clearly can't be yellow. So this is the third combination of eight cage. But now, that means that th there are three ways of making eight in, th in, in, in a domino. One, seven, two, six, and three, five. And one of these needs to be 2-6 now, because this is the three flavours, if you like. And these two can't be 2-6, so that's 2-6, and we have a little tiny breakthrough. Um, oh yeah, okay, so now this 7 cage. Right, so now this 7 cage can't be 1-6 or 2-5, so that's 3-4. Ah, <laughs> right, and we've got the same thing. Ah, it's beautiful. It's so simple. Um, in, and I don't mean simple as in basic or um, easy. It's simple as in clean and precise and beautiful. Because um, this this pattern of sevens has exactly the same properties, if you like, as this pattern of eights, i.e. can there are three flavours of making seven in dominoes, one, six, two, five, and three, four. Now, if these were the same flavour, then by Sudoku, these two digits would go into the 16 cage, which means the third digit in the 16 cage would have to add up to 16 minus seven, which is nine. So that doesn't work, which tells you these two cages are different flavours, and this can't be this flavor or this flavor. So this is the third flavor of seven. So we can, let's do some highlighting with these. We could use red, couldn't we? And let's go for maybe all oh, or mm, gray. There we go. That's very nice. Now, what does that mean? Right, right. So now we're going back to the beginning because now I can't put a three in my 21 cage. This, this cell can't be three anymore. So now I know what this 21 cage is, which is one, two, five, one, two, four, five, nine. And these are not two or four, actually. Um, which is lovely. This, these are not five. And what can we do with that? I don't know. Oh, Bobbin. Oh, I thought I made a mistake then, but I haven't. There's Remember, there's a nine down here. So these can't be nines, so this must be a one and this must be a five, which means one and five come out of these squares. So this we've now developed a two, four, nine triple at the bottom of column seven. We've got all of the low digits, look, in column six already. So these squares have to be seven, eight or nine.
and oh nearly and in this funny shape region here what's this a sort of skeleton key type shape or a tap isn't it um a faucet um then th we know that this is eight cells large so it's missing one digit now that digit's very nearly having to be five now because five can't go in those three and it can't go in these three so if there is a five in this cage it has to go there in this domino which would would that put any meaningful pressure on the 17 cage no because it would still have eight seven and six available to it which add up to 21 which is plenty um okay ah now i'm stuck <laughs> i was i got off to a good start um and now I'm not sure what to do. We could. Oh, I've got nothing here. Hang on. Right. OK. This is a green domino, isn't it? In box two. Because I need to put these two digits somewhere in this three by three box. And we know that they're not. They're not in the other two seven cages. And this these two digits can't include a seven, eight or a nine. Um, so that this is a green domino which means two of these three squares are green. Right, and that means these squares, they are, this is lovely, right, okay. Oh, this is, it's just, it's got such a crisp flow to it, this puzzle. Now, if we look at these digits, they are the digits one, six, two, five, and three, four. So, the other digits in this in this um, box have to be seven, eight, and nine, and these can't be nine. So that's got to be nine. These are seven and eight. These are not nine. At least one of seven and eight is now in the 16 cage, possibly both of them. It could be one, seven, eight. But one of them can go here. Only one of them can go down here because we know that two of these cells are green. Ah, I see. Oh, right. Okay. Um, let's have a look at this box now where nine can't go in an eight cage because <laughs> you can't accompany it with minus one. So nine is in one of those two cells. Which means that nine Yeah, it's really interesting. Like if that was nine, then the nine in this box couldn't repeat in the column and couldn't repeat in the cage and would have to go there. If that's nine No, it's less good, then nine has two possible escape escape routes. Now, can we do the same thing we did with green, with purple in this box? So purple... Well... Yeah, we can... Well, no, but sort of. I think purple is 1-7 now, isn't it? And the reason I think that must be true is that where does purple go? Well, it, it's got to be in two of these three squares but it's not equal to nine which means this digit has to go into purple well we can't put eight zero in this cage so that must be seven this must be eight this is a one seven pair which means that this combination is one nine now and that's lovely because i've remembered something else um one let me just think about this for a moment this must be three five now because it's not one seven and it's not two six, which means these two squares are four and eight by Sudoku. But I, I want to come back to the skeleton key, the skeleton key faucet, because we now know that there is no five in this. So it's got to have every other digit in it. So it's got to have eight in it. Um, and that eight is going to be in this domino, which means there's an eight in one of those two squares in box nine by Sudoku. 
No, I was about to say one has to be in it. One is already in it, Simon. Do not be daft. Um, I mean, <laughs> let's just pause for a, for a couple of seconds and just this puzzle was set by a 14 year old. It is, it just blows your mind. It blows your mind. Se oh, seven is in the 17 cage now. So there's two more digits in here that add up to 10 and they're both even because one nine and three seven are not available. So this is either two eight seven or it's four six seven. Um, and I don't know how we oh I thought I was going to be able to do something with Sudoku for a moment but I can't 5 is in one of those two squares which means 5 is in one of these two squares that's not helping is it uh, okay Can we... Hmm. I don't know what to do again. <laughs> Let me think. One, can we disambiguate the seven dominoes now? One of, one of these is two five. One of them is one six. So one of them is locked out of the 16 cage, but... Mm. Um, nine is in one of those squares by Sudoku. I think I've just got to go... Ah, look, yes. No, 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 no. For some reason I thought I was going to get a one in one of those, which would most certainly not be true. There is a one in one of these by Sudoku because of these ones. Uh, two. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can. I can actually see that this can't be seven two eight now. But it's for a slightly weird reason. If this, if this was seven two eight, let me just put it in to show you. We run into a Sudoku problem, which I mean, it's quite outrageous being made to do Sudoku problems in your Sudoku puzzles. But you can see then that two is going to be here and eight is here in box five, which means these two squares would have to include two and eight as well as apparently nine. And that won't work. So this has got to be four, six, seven, which means that this square becomes a two and that square becomes a six. And now... Well, now the, these squares are known. They're 3, 5, and 8. So we should put that in, see if that helps. These squares are 1, no, 4, 2, 4, and 9. And that can't be 4. And that, oh, it can't be 9 either. Right, okay, so that is 2. We get a 4, 9 pair at the top. So that's going to have an impact on this 16 cage, is it? If this is 4, ooh, that's difficult. That's very difficult. That's it. No, that doesn't work. That's lovely. Right. If this is 4, this domino has to add up to 12. But it couldn't be 4, 8. And it couldn't be 3, 9. So it would have to be 5, 7. But it can't be 5, 7. Because one of these has got 5 in it. But we don't know which one, but one of them does, because one of them's a two five pair, because the only one that doesn't have we we know this is the three four pair. So these are one six and two five. So you can't have five seven here, so this can't be four. And that means this squares are nine, which means these squares oh uh yeah, well, okay, that means these squares are grey. <laughs> That's absolutely gorgeous. Yes, because these uh, this is a domino now that adds up to seven. But it's not the green domino, it's not the red domino, because it sees both of those, so it must be a grey domino. Let's put it in, which means it's a three, four pair. And there but that's done, because that's four, that's four, that's three. We might uh no, actually that's that has kiboshed a three in the corner. 
I, I was suddenly thinking I could get a three in the corner there, which I most certainly cannot. Um, okay, so let's do some tidying and see if we can learn anything new as a result of this. I think this square is a seven or an eight now because it sees um, it sees all of the low digits in the, in the seven cages and it sees nine. So there is one, there's one of seven or eight here. There is only one of seven or eight in the 16 cage. Um, right, so can we, what are we meant to do with this newfound knowledge? I'd love to know, but I don't. Um, why have I got five pencil marked into only those two squares, but not this one? Oh, because there's a five in the column. I do find it difficult to see black digits um, because my brain is so, I'm so not used to being given them. Look, this square can't be a four, look, because of the two, four, nine, triple. Oh, look, yeah, this row is where we look now because this is a three, five pair and that three tells me the order. Yeah, is that right? That seems to be right. Okay, three goes here, five goes here. Uh, so three is in three is nearly in this 16 cage if we could get the three into it well at least it would limit it slightly those squares we know they're one two and eight let's pencil mark that and see if that reveals anything we know this one isn't two hmm Okay. No, I'm not. I'm. I think I'm now missing something quite obvious. Four is down here. Could we do? Oh, nine maybe. Nine has appeared in the skeleton key already, hasn't it? So nine is quite restricted. Not very restricted, but quite restricted in box seven. Could we do anything? Oh yeah, okay. Um, again, skeleton key. Remember it's got every digit in it apart from five. So it's got three in it somewhere. And that's got to be in this domino, which, ah uh, no, it doesn't work. Oh, it, well, no, it does work in a different way. I was thinking I could get the threes aligning and that might tell me something about column six, but I think it's better just to do straight Sudoku. And that means this square is a three, which means this square is a three, which gives me a five, eight combination left over. Now, my eight in the skeleton key seems to be in this domino. So eight in this column is now, at the, uh, no, eight is in the corner because we know that the eight in this column can't go here because of this seven, eight pair. And if eight is in the corner, that gets me a seven here. And we know by Sudoku, I've now got seven in my 16 cage, but no eight or nine. Well, okay, that's maybe not that dramatic then. So I need either four, five or three, six in there as well. Um, I don't know, one, six, seven. This square is one or six. That's gorgeous, that is gorgeous, look at this. So if you look down this column, I get a one or a six here, which means this green seven cage is not one six, which means the only one that can be one six is the red seven cage, which means this one is two five, this one is two five. And now, how do we make the extra nine we need in this 16 cage? We haven't got the four five option anymore. So we must have three six in here. So this is three, six, seven, which means this is four, this is three. These squares are a one nine pair. Well, that's, I can't see exactly what it's doing, but it's given me this digit as a six. 
This column needs a 1, 7 pair at the bottom. Now 7 still has to make an appearance in the key. So 7 is in one of those three cells. Well, that's in, that is interesting. Um, not making the joke again. But look, so 7 in the bottom row now is in the same positions as 8. So we found a 7, 8 pair in the bottom in... Um, box 9 and we've not placed 1, 5 and 6 into this box so 5 has to go here and this is a 1, 6 pair which we might be able to sort out let's take a scan um, no that squares 5 by Sudoku now so one of these squares is 2 these two squares have got to include a 4 and a 1. Well, and there's, there's this 2, 4, 9 triple. So that's the 4. That's the 1. This is now an 8. Oh, I see. I've got a 6, 7 pair in this column. Bobbins. Um, what are those two squares? 2, 8. Is that doable? sure it is somehow I'm going to decolor degreenify it um, and let me think we've got loads and loads of pairs everywhere and we've maybe the bottom row I have effectively got five digits in the bottom row I've not put in two four six and nine so no um, no, I don't know. Uh, what on earth? Is it this key thing? Is there, is there something I've missed about this? What digits have I put in it? I've definitely put 1 and 9 in it. I know there's a 7 here. I know there's an 8 here. I know there's no 5 in it. So 6, 2, 3... Six. Oh no, three is in it as well. Okay, so I've done three. I haven't done two in it. That's one thing we have to think about. Oh, that might, now the poltergeist is back as well. Is this obvious? Um. Oh yeah, there we go. Sudoku's going to help me. Oh good. 7, 1, 1, 9. So 9 is not here. So 9 is there in the bottom box, which means 9 is in this square. This is lovely. Because we know 9 can't repeat in the skeleton key, we've now got 9 over here. We've got a 2, 4 pair. We've got... What else have we got? We've got twos, five, 2, 4, 5 and 8 down this column. I'm going to pencil mark this. 2, 4, 5, 8. This one is 2, 5, 6, 8 I want to say. So 2, 5, 6, 8. Now I can see I can get rid of 5 from there and 8 from here and 5 from here actually. So let's have another look at this. So I definitely know there's a 6 down here. So 6 has got to be in one of those two cells in the bottom row. So these are from 2, 4 and 6. And this column is 2, 4. Sorry, I realise I've just stopped talking. That's because I, I've, I haven't got anything I can tell you. I think it's this key somehow. Yes. Ah, that's not seven. Well, that's going to do things. Right, okay. This digit is where I want to turn our attention to. Because that digit needs to appear in the key. It's not a five. Where does it go in the key? That's probably been available for ages, actually. And I haven't seen it. But it's only, it's only got one cell. So this square and this square are mimics of each other, which means they go there. Uh, this is a 2 or a 4, and well, the key thing is, the thing I've seen is that this is not, not a 7. And if it's not a 7, the 7 is in one of these two cells in the key, which is going to do the 7 and the 1 on this side, which does the 1 and the 6 over here, which does a 2 here, 
a 2 here, a 5 here, a 5 here, a 5 here, 8 here. This now is 6. Uh, this is 4. This is 4. This is 4 then, using the power of Doku. This 4 does loads of stuff. Look, 4, 8, 8, 7. That puts the 7 there. I can get this digit. Is it 3? Yeah, I think it's three. We've not put three into the skeleton key. So, ah, three and five go in. Five and two go in. Two in this bottom box goes here. This square's a six. That's a six. That's a one. That's a one. That's a nine. Uh, hopefully, we're go hopefully we're not left with a deadly pattern over this side of the grid. That would be truly awful. One and two. Two and eight. Eight and seven. Uh, this square's a seven. Yeah, that's lovely. That's a six. That's a seven. That's a four. So that's a seven. That's a six. And that is how to solve an absolutely splendid puzzle. Oh, so it's been out for three days, actually. Well, nearly three days. 133 people. Um, so it's, it's getting a lot of attention. It certainly deserves it. Something doesn't add up. Well, OK, I think that's probably referring to yeah, it's probably referring to the fact that if you if you mimic the eight cages or the seven cages, which no, hang on, this this these two seven cages or these two eight cages, you break the sixteen and the seventeen clues because of the two given nines. It's a lovely idea to start, isn't it? Really, it's just an absolutely cracking puzzle. So so much to admire, and the sort of it's it's just crisp logic. It's it's stunning. It's stunning again, Chan. Well done. We 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 genuflect before you, um, and and sort of all wish that we were we that we were given your brains. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.